So you want to buy a boat rover arrow. I have a seat here and let me tell you why that is a terrible idea. Started, calm the nerves. I also want to state that this is not a bashing video. This is not me being mad and just, you know what, I'm gonna just throw this out there so people think you're terrible. There's still a lot of pros to the motor and the vessel itself that I will talk about, but this is a concern video because there is not enough reviews on this product and I personally don't think they really tested it to the market that they were trying to sell it in. And I don't want somebody to end up in the situation that I just did. And it was, it was very disheartening because right now I'm in between houses while my new house is being built. I have prior heat exhaustion, so the kayak just really wasn't working for me anymore. I needed something that could just be reliable and be able to, and I'm, I'm traveling a lot. I wanted something that I knew when I hit the water, there's nothing I have to worry about. And I'm not going to be exhausted from pedaling or paddling all day. This has been nothing but a nightmare instead of that. And I do not want somebody else to go through the same thing that I went through. When I originally bought and purchased it, I'd use the Affirm method that allows you to pay in installments at 0%. I immediately got a freight notification and none of my, in their fact sheet, none of my items were supposed to be shipped freight. So called their customer service. They said, yeah, that's not correct. Got it figured out. I was sent my real tracking numbers. Good. Awesome. I don't know what happened. Cool. Well, three days later, so the shipping only took three days, which is really nice. Three days later, everything showed up except the motor. Tracking number still said it was in Houston. Day later, said it was in Georgia. Excuse me, what? So me knowing what I know about e-commerce and how shipping works, I called FedEx. They confirmed that it was in Georgia. Couldn't give me any other answers. So then I called Boat, in which I was told that it shipped freight and was giving a tracking number. So then I called, which they didn't give me the customer service number for the, the freight company. I had to find it on Google, call them, give them the number, and it was for a paddleboard. Not what I had ordered. A little back and forth, they didn't even have anything on record in my name. Call Boat back, tell them what I just found out, they'll get back to me. Long loop de doo back and forth. Uh, the motor showed up two days later. It was sitting here in Houston the whole time. FedEx erased all the tracking history, and I have no idea what happened, honestly. Like, all FedEx on that one. But then... The problems started from day one, and I apologize now for all the sweaty mess that I am when I was packing everything up, but it is humid here in Texas. Where do I begin? Oh yeah. So here, I'm gonna put it in my truck, and as you can see, the bottom part of this strap just, it's had to come right off. You know, I got to really looking at it. It's, it's only a single stitch that's really put in there, and if you're gonna be hauling something like this, and traveling it, and this would be a travel bag, you think they would have done a double stitch. Like even the seams here, you know, it's a single stitching all the way down. So this is the part that messed up on me. The fuel prime bulb right here, it's a little bitty bulb. So it ended up having a hole in it the very first day. Probably ran the motor maybe 30, 40 minutes. Maybe, had just wasn't sounding right. Um, I smelled gas, so I, Popped it open, looked at it, and I just, every time I, I, I pushed it, I, I could hear air, so found the hole on top of it. They don't give you instructions on how much oil to put in. Oh my God, it's so hot. So there was that problem, and then Idea for some reason, doesn't have an online manual for their six horsepower outboard, because they no longer service them in the U.S. Didn't find that out until after I bought it, uh, after I bought it. Um, they also don't tell you in the instructions how much oil that's supposed to go into it. I literally have to get a measuring oil dispenser to accurately measure how much oil I'm supposed to have in this outboard because it is nowhere to be found. So right now I don't have it at full PSI. I just have it at two pounds. I'm getting ready to pack it up and send it back to boat because I've had way too many problems. Uh, first of all, so these are the motor mount straps. You see that the direction that they go is backwards, pulling backwards on this strap mount here. But somehow, one way or another, um, this has started ripping in the opposite direction. I'm not really sure how that could happen. On the very first day, uh, I started to notice that these were already starting to peel up. 
and melt. Removing the mounts for your grab rack and or your cooler rack. These have started to peel already. Remind you, I've only taken this out two times. Starting to peel here. You can see right there on the edge, it's peeling up. Then comes the motor mount. And the issue I ran into this last time with the new motor. It just fell off. I picked up the motor and it fell off. Went ahead and pulled the rest of the gunk off because it was sticking to everything in my box. And I am literally astounded. Like I, I literally could not believe that this just, it had crinkled up and I'll show you a picture right now. It had crinkled up and got, cause it got so hot and the pressure of the motor kept it on there. But when I went to pull the motor off, it literally just fell right off. I was fishing in water with water coming all over the boat and somehow blood still managed to stain not just like get on there it's stained and it is soaked into the actual matting there can't get it out i've washed it i've used done i've done everything i could to get it out oh before i forget as i'm taking this thing apart these pins after the first time i pulled them out as you can see it's i mean they're pretty in there this happened every time i tried messing with that I've had to re-bend them and put them back in because they refuse. There's there's no there's no slide for them to go in. They didn't divot the other side, so they'd be it's it's literally just a straight hole on the other side, and you have to make it fit. It's gonna come in low, it's gonna come in high, but then it won't fit this outside pin. Like that was a nightmare. It, it's a nightmare every time I gotta pull these things out, so I just leave them in. Now that I get better light, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, like it's it's not lining up. But if you try to line this up correctly with these holes that they have no actual slide for. Look, like it's, you gotta squeeze them a little bit. They're not really fitting correctly, but if I needed to line, so this side's lined up for the most part, but look, like it's, I have to literally pry this thing on here and then hope for the best on this one and just try to use like a, like a flathead or something to get it back together. But while it's on the skiff, I don't have that luxury. I literally have to just keep pushing until I can make this work. It's, it's not user friendly at all. The only positive thing I can say about the Rover Arrow is that in shallow water, it scoots. Even with a motor, me, everything pushed, uh, everything loaded down on my gear with a, with a paddle, I can get in probably about an inch or two of water and very, very easily and maneuver very, very easily. I was very impressed with that. I know that this is designed to hold the micro poles in the back and you have your sand spear spot here and here. But the problem with that is like me, I'm hunting, if I'm fishing the edge of a marsh or the, uh, an outlet and the uh, tide's going out and I'm trying to space into the, the cut, this does not work back here. You still have all this you have to control. And they didn't make a spot for the sand spear to go here or here. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, so I bought the cooler tie down straps. And as you can see, this one's missing some lettering. Well, while I was using it to strap down my things, it got hot on the first day and decided to melt off onto my board. And I don't want to try to get that off because what if I tear it? What if I tear it up? What if I make it worse? Both times I've taken this vessel out, the motor almost left me stranded the first time. The second time, the motor could have came off because the, the, the rubber just fell off, could have possibly leaving me stranded. If you start looking at reviews for the Rover Arrow, they're very hard to find, which is why you're here. But you will see some forum threads where people have the seams have just blown out on them while they're airing it up. With the Texas Summer, if I air this up to minimum, I have found that it will increase at least a pound or two. With loaded gear, who knows that if I'm adding fish to my vessel as I'm catching it, I am increasing the weight, which is increasing the pressure, which is increasing the internal pressure. There's no manual gauges on here. So unless you carry the arrow pump with you and have a way to plug it in, because remember, they don't have a regular outlet. It's only batteries or 12 volt, 12 volt plug then you have no idea what your air pressure is and no way to monitor it. 
that right there can be a potential for a blowout on the water, which can be very dangerous. And I know I look like crap and I don't care because I am so fed up with boat and this thing, thankfully they're taking it back and I'm getting a gator shell, not equal at all whatsoever. This, this thing right here, do not buy it unless you live in Florida, you have 100% sand everywhere you go, you have a place to swim to in case this thing does fall apart. Um, or if you intend to use it as a paddleboard, if you're not a very heavy fisherman, but you want something that's got a little bit of a cockpit than the regular paddle boards, perfect. But if you're a real angler uh, who may be five, six miles away from a boat launch by yourself, so far from what my experience has been, you could be putting yourself into a situation that you don't want to be in. And what they're not telling you in the fine print when it comes to boat, that I had to dig around after I started having these problems on what the return policy is, 30 days. 30 day return policy for most items except the Rover Arrow. Idea does not service the motors in the US no more and boat only covers them for 30 days. Remember that, 30 day warranty on a product that you regard, sorry my wrist keeps like twitching, 30 days on a warranty that on a product that you regard as like one of the best on the market, but you're only gonna give it a 30 day warranty on $4,500 worth of equipment. That should be enough to tell you right there, do not buy this.